All right, so today we're talking about galvanic cells, which are also known as voltaic cells. Um, and this is a big part of where we're going for the next little bit with electrochemistry. So we talk about current as flow of electrons, right? And redox reactions generate current, right? Because redox reactions can generate electrons. If we can harvest those electrons, we can do something meaningful with them, right? And so we're going to make galvanic cells, which I want you to know are the same thing as voltaic cells. Okay? Different textbooks call them, some textbooks call them galvanic cells, some textbooks call them voltaic cells. They're the same thing. So know that those two words can be used interchangeably. Okay? It doesn't make a difference if you call it a galvanic cell or a voltaic cell. And also just a reminder that all these notes are available online already. So if you just take an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent, you connect them with a wire, is that enough to make a electrochemical cell? Well, the answer is no, right? Electrons can travel through that wire, but the problem is you're gonna get current for like a second. Any guesses as to why this won't work as an electrochemical cell? Is the circuit complete? Think about what we learned like back in like middle school about complete circuits, right? You have a circle. This is an incomplete circuit, right? You're gonna get charge build up here, charge build up here, and you'll get the light bulb to shine for literally about a second. Uh, so you don't have a complete circuit right now. What you need is you need to connect the two solutions, right? These two solutions themselves are not connected currently, right? You don't have a complete loop. And so you use a salt bridge, or you can use a porous disc. I'll show you pictures using both. And this is really important, folks. What is the purpose of the salt bridge? It allows ions to flow. I can't tell you the number of people who get this wrong on tests. They tell me that electrons flow through the salt bridge. And that's not true, okay? Ions flow through the salt bridge. Why do we want ions to flow? Well, because without the flow of ions, this side just accumulates a positive charge, and this side just accumulates a negative charge. You get this big, giant charge buildup. There's no electrical flow. I mean, there's no uh, complete circuit anymore, right? Redox reaction occurs. Now you got a positive, now you got a negative. The end. If you want that redox to continue occurring, you've got to have a way for ions to exchange, okay? So ions are what flow through the salt bridge, not electrons. Make sure you understand that the ions are what's being transferred through a salt bridge or a porous disc, not electrons. Electrons are moving through the wire, right? Where you have your light bulb or your buzzer or whatever you want to be doing its job, right? Ions are flowing through the salt bridge to maintain um, neutral charge so that one side doesn't become a positive buildup and a negative buildup. This is what completes the circuit. All right, so this is what a salt bridge looks like. It's just some sample. You got ions in here. We're gonna be using salt bridge in lab, so it's not really that a complicated piece of equipment. A uh, porous disc is just a little piece right here in the middle. Right? You've got beakers with little arms, porous disc in the middle, okay? So no big deal, just plop one of those in there. Now you have ions flowing. Okay, to prevent charge buildup, and then your electrons are still flowing through the bridge and through the wire. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Okay, so here's kind of the whole picture. You've got some sort of reaction producing electrons. Those electrons travel through the wire, right? And there's where you've got your light bulb, your voltmeter measuring the current, etc. And then they're coming over here. Okay, and then your salt bridge, your porous disc, is connecting the two. Make sure that you understand the difference between what's going on in the wire versus what's going on in the salt bridge slash porous disc. Okay, the wire is where we're capturing the electrons. The salt bridge is where we're keeping the charge balance. Okay, so we've got some important vocab words here. Oxidation is occurring at a place we call the anode. Oxidation occurs at the anode, and reduction 
occurs at the cathode. And then the pull on the electrons, right, this pull of electrons through the wire is called the electromotive force, EMF, which is also known as the cell potential, E cell. Okay, so electromotive force is the same thing as cell potential. And the unit that we'll be using here is the volt. Actually, when we're doing our labs, we're going to be using millivolts. We're going to be dealing with millivolts in lab. We're not going to be generating a whole lot of current. But that's okay. Millivolts is what we'll be looking at. Um, but in our calculations, we'll be using volts. Okay, so oxidation is at the anode, reduction is at the cathode, and then the cell potential is the pull on these electrons. Okay, the unit that we're dealing with here is the volt. Questions on this vocab? Questions on the vocab. Okay, so oxidation at the anode, reduction at the cathode, right? <laughs> you like that? Red cat, just remember red cat, okay? Red cat, reduction, cathode, okay? Reduction occurs at the cathode. I had to remember to turn the volume up for that one. Oxidation's at the anode, but if you just remember red cat, you can remember that oxidation's gotta occur at the other option, okay? Red cat. All right, so there's another picture from a different textbook. Cathode becomes positively charged. Think about a cation, right, positively charged. The cathode is positively charged, and the anode is negatively charged. All right, now, when you talk about how a battery works, electrons can't flow both directions. Electrons can only flow one direction. Just like if you're looking at a waterfall, are there any water molecules going up the waterfall? No, right? I mean, there might be some spraying into the air up at the bottom, but that doesn't count, right? There are no electrons, I mean, there are no water molecules going this direction. Batteries work the same way, okay? There's only one way that the electrons can be flowing, and it's gonna flow from the high potential to the low potential, from the anode to the cathode, okay, is the flow of electrons. Let's take a second and go through how we draw an electrochemical cell, because I'm guaranteeing you this is something that you're going to have to do for yourself. So let's spend a little bit of time now talking about how we draw one of these things. So drawing an electrochemical cell, this is a galvanic slash voltaic cell. Okay, so we're going to have some sort of beaker, beaker A, and let's draw our salt bridge. Okay, beaker B. Salt bridge allows for ion exchange. That's what it's doing. Okay, it's not doing anything other than ion exchange. Here's our liquid level. Here's our liquid level. And then we're gonna have some sort of metal. And right now we're not gonna be interested in what the reactions are, we're just gonna pick ones, okay? I'll tell you how to pick a good one in a few minutes, but for right now, let's just pick something. All right, let's pretend that what's going on here is Cu solid, going to Cu2 plus plus 2E minus. That's the cell reaction going on in here. Is that an oxidation or a reduction? That's an oxidation. Okay. So does that mean that this is the cathode or the anode? Anode, right? Red cat. So these electrons that are getting produced are gonna travel through the wire and there is only one direction that they can go. Right? 
right? The electrons are traveling this way. And then if you want to put your light bulb in, right, there's your light bulb. And then over here, what's going to be happening? Some sort of oxidation or reduction. If oxidation is occurring here, what's going to be occurring here? Reduction. So let's just pick something random. Let's do Zn2 plus plus 2e minus becoming Zn solid. So this is a reduction, all right? That makes this the cathode. Okay, this is why electrons only flow anode to cathode and not the other way around. Because ask yourself, where are the electrons being generated? Electrons can only be generated by oxidation, right? This is why our, our electrons are flowing anode to cathode and not cathode to anode. Does this make sense? Electrons flow anode to cathode only, right? Spontaneously. Now we'll talk about non-spontaneous cell reactions in a couple days. But if you want a reaction that's occurring spontaneously, it's going to flow anode to cathode. Why? Because that's where the electrons are being made. Okay? You're generating the electrodes at the anode. You're using them up at the cathode. Does this make sense? You see why it has to flow only one direction. It can't go both ways. Because right? you're making and harnessing the electrons here. You're transferring through your wire. They're being consumed over here. Does this make sense? Yes, 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 yes. All right, so make sure that you understand how to draw the cell. And by the way, if you want to watch a video just of how to draw that cell, I've got a short little video on YouTube just of me drawing one of those cells. Okay, so spontaneously flows from anode to cathode. This is where the electrons are being made. Okay, so we're going to calculate E cell. And again, what is E cell? It's a measure of this pull, this flow, okay, this flow. And so we're going to calculate E cell. It's not a hard calculation, so if you're starting to cringe today, the worst you're going to do is subtract. So if you can hang with me through some subtraction, you'll be okay. Now let's remind ourselves what standard conditions are. Standard conditions mean we're referring to a reference state. Right, that's what the little degree sign means. It has nothing to do with temperature. We've seen this notation a hundred times now, right? That little degree sign just means under standard conditions. So under standard conditions, that means we're dealing with concentrations of one molar. We're at 25 degrees Celsius. And if we're dealing with a gas, we're at a pressure of one atmosphere. Okay, so we're pretty close to standard conditions in this room right now. Now, if you see E with a little degree sign, right? That's the cell potential under standard conditions. I take a minute and point that out because we will be talking about E cell under non-standard conditions at some point down the road. And we'll do calculations differently for non-standard conditions than for standard conditions. So there is a appendix in the back of your textbook of standard reduction potentials. And they're also all over the internet. If you just search standard reduction potentials, they're in the appendix and your back of your book, and then there are about a thousand of them online. Okay, so if you ever need a standard reduction potential, there's your source. Okay, if you're working on online homework, you can just search it online, use your textbook. I'll give you a hard copy here in just a minute. So the standard hydrogen potential is the reference point. I'm actually going to go ahead and give that to you now. Let me pause the recording. Print that for you real quick. It'll take just a second. All right, so the handout that I just gave you is posted online. It's a figure from a different textbook, but um, it's more condensed than the tables in your book because your book has like five pages of standard reduction potentials. This is just a condensed version of some of the most popular ones. So if you ever need one that's not on here, just go to your appendix in the back of your book or go search online. Okay, so that's what you do. Now, if you find the one with the little lines around it, right, so if you notice, uh, turn it back on, if you notice right here, right, this one's got lines around it, that's zero, 
that's the reference point. Okay, the, the reduction of hydrogen, is, um, hydrogen ion, I should say, is chosen as the reference point. Just like pH of seven is a reference point, right? E of zero is a reference point. So that's why this one's got lines around it. It's, it's been designated as the point of reference. Okay, so things are measured in reference to it. That's why it's special. Okay, find this reaction on your chart. See if you can find this exact one. Cu going to Cu2 plus plus 2E minus. Can you find that on your chart anywhere? Can you, can you, can you? No, you can't. Any guesses as to why? What kind of reaction is that? It's an oxidation, right. And this is all, these are all reductions, right. So this is called a standard reduction potential. This is an oxidation. So here's what we have done as a group of scientists, right? I wasn't personally involved in the decision, so I guess I shouldn't say we. The scientific enterprise as a whole has decided that instead of having one chart for oxidations and one chart for reductions, right, we're just gonna list everything as reductions because the only difference between the oxidation version and the reduction version is virtually nothing, right? So instead of having two charts, one for oxidation and one for reduction, everything's gonna be listed as a reduction. So if you wanna know E cell for this reaction, don't look up the oxidation version, look it up as a reduction. And there it is right here, Cu2 plus plus 2E minus makes Cu. The potential there is 0.34. That's a cursive E, okay? It's, a, it's just a cursive E. So if you wanna find out E for an oxidation, just look up the reduction version. Okay, that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. That way you don't have to have two charts conveying the same information, okay? So if I want this reaction, I just look it up as a reduction. Even though I know in my mind it's an oxidation, the E value is gonna be the same for the oxidation and the reduction. So there it is. That's the one we just looked at. And again, these are only your most common ones. If you need one that's not on this chart, don't go, well, it doesn't exist. Either go to your textbook, because it's like five pages in your textbook, or you can look it up on the internet. There are pages and pages and pages and pages on the internet. So how do we calculate E cell? Well, you're gonna write half reactions, just like we did last week, and you need to make sure that they're balanced. And then you're gonna look up the reduction potential for each of your half reactions. You're gonna decide which reaction is occurring at the cathode and which reaction is occurring at the anode. Remember, red cat. So figure out which half is going on at the cathode, which half is going on at the anode. You're going to multiply by coefficients to get your electrons to cancel out. That's really not gonna to play too much into today's calculations, uh, but it will on Wednesday. But the important thing to keep in mind is if you multiply a half reaction by three, you do not multiply its potential by three. Okay, this is not like Hess's law. Remember last semester when we did Hess's law calculations, we multiplied the whole thing by five, we reversed one of them, right? If you reversed it, you reversed delta H. This is not like what delta H is, because delta H is contingent on how many times it happens, right? So if the coefficient's five, Delta H is factoring in. Okay, this is happening five times. But E cell is not contingent on how many times it happens. So we're not gonna multiply, if we multiply a half reaction by three, we're not gonna multiply its E value by three. Okay, make sure you do that. And then here's the equation. It's the, stand, it's the reduction potential of the cathode minus the reduction potential of the anode. Okay, it's cathode minus anode. So you look up the reduction potential for the reaction that occurs at the cathode, and then from that you subtract the reduction potential of the reaction that's occurring at the anode. How do I know which one's cathode, which one anode? Red cap, okay, just remember, red cap. So let's do this one together. A galvanic cell has this net ionic equation, and I wanna know, number one, what's the balanced cell reaction overall, and then number two, what's E cell? So, 
This is going to be easy to balance. There are no hydrogens and oxygens dealing with here. And so this is occurring in the neutral solution, right? Because I don't care about adding H plus or OH minus because there are no H's and O's in this net ionic equation. So we go through and we assign our oxidation numbers. Plus three, zero, plus two, plus two. Fe went from plus three to plus two. That's a reduction, right? Red cat, so that's my cathode reaction. Copper went from zero to plus two. So that's an oxidation that makes it my anode reaction. Now in terms of balancing this, all I need to do is multiply this half reaction by two to get my final balanced equation. All right, so that's not anything new. The only new part is identifying the cathode and the anode. We learned how to balance cell reactions last week. So really the only new part here is figuring out who's the cathode and who's the anode. The reduction is the cathode, the oxidation is the anode. Is everyone in agreement with me up to this point? Have I lost anyone? Because the coefficient here is already two. To go from zero to plus two, that's a loss of two electrons. And this one is a gain of one electron because you're going from plus three to plus two. Does that make sense? All right, now, when we calculate E cell, where are these values coming from? They're coming from my chart, okay? So, the cathode reaction, Fe3 plus, plus electron, going to Fe2 plus. Hmm. Let's find it on our chart. Fe3 plus, plus electron going to Fe2 plus, 0.77 volts. Right there. Bottom of the first column. Does everybody see where that 0.77 came from? And then for the anode, now this is an oxidation. However, my chart has no oxidations on it, right? My chart is only reductions. So I'm going to look it up go in this direction, right? But it doesn't change the value of E cell. So if I look up the oxidation version up here, I mean the reduction version up here, it's right here at the top. Oh, excuse me. Cu2 plus plus 2e minus is... Oh, there, yeah, that's it. Cu2 plus plus 2e minus. I was looking at the wrong coefficient. Yeah. 0.34. So right here at the top of the next column. Okay, and then it's just cathode minus anode. So cathode minus anode, and my unit would be volts. Does everyone see how we did that? Easy diff. That's as hard as the math's going to get today. Just some subtraction. So you try this one. Here's the net ionic equation. Balance it, that's a good review of last week, and then calculate E cell. All right, let's go over it and see what you came up with. So we have to balance it and then calculate E cell, yes. So to balance this reaction, we have to first assign oxidation numbers. All right, magnesium is zero, plus three, plus two, and then zero. Okay, so this is a loss of two electrons. This is a gain of three electrons. So in terms of balancing this, I've got to multiply this one by two and this one's by three. But do I multiply my reduction potential by two or my reduction potential by three? Is this like Hess's law where you multiply anything you do to the reaction? No. Remember in Hess's law, we multiply delta H by whatever we did here. But E cell is not contingent on how many times it happens. So this is really more important for what we're doing on Wednesday. <laughs> we're going to be involved with number of electrons transferred, but not today. Today is just for practice, right? and for a review of balancing a redox reaction. So there's my final balanced reaction. Do we agree? Did you get the same thing I got for the balanced reaction? All right, now we have to figure out who's the cathode, who's the anode. So for the cathode reaction, let's see, aluminum plus three and P minus making aluminum metal, right? Negative 0.1, 1.66. So it's in your second column, close to the bottom. And then coupled down will be your other one, Mg2 plus plus 2E minus. Remember, this is an oxidation. However, everything in here is a reduction. 
So even if you're looking up an oxidation, just remember to look up the reduction version of it on here because we only have reductions here, no oxidations. And now it's just cathode minus anode. So negative minus a negative, so that's adding. Right? So that's why it's positive 0.71. And my unit is volts. Do you agree on how we got this number? Do you get the same thing I got? 0.71 volts. Any questions on how we do this? It's really important that you understand how to calculate E cell because we're building on this on Wednesday. All right, try another one. Here's the net ionic equation. I want you to balance it and I want you to calculate E cell. see what we got. So there's the balanced redox equation. We don't need to multiply by any coefficients. One's a gain of two electrons, one's a loss of two electrons. So from our chart, these are the two reductions we're going to be looking up. Right? The zinc reaction is occurring at the anode, and the copper reaction is what's occurring at the cathode. Do we agree with the balanced reaction and the E cell value? 1.10 volts. Do we agree? Any questions on where our answer came from? How we got the answer we got? Does everybody understand why we're doing everything on the chart as a reduction? You can't actually have a redox reaction of two reductions, right? That doesn't exist. Our chart by convention is just reductions. Ready to try another one? All right, try this one. This is occurring in acidic solution. That's important for you to know. Here's the net ionic equation, and it is occurring in acidic solution. I want you to balance it and calculate E cell. I'll pause it and let's try this one. See if you got the same thing I got. All right, there's the final redox reaction. Do we agree? We had to multiply the anode reaction by six, I mean by three. But that doesn't factor into my E cell calculation though, right? Because I don't multiply my reduction potential by any coefficient. So I do that to balance, but it does not affect my E cell calculation. Do we agree 0.8 volts? It's also a nice way to check your work, right? Because your uh, value should be the same. I mean, when you, when you have a balanced half reaction, it should match what's on your handout. 1.33, and it does, right? So it should match. That's a nice kind of self-check. Do we agree on how to do this one? All right, let's talk about line notation. So this is a shorthand. This is a shorthand. So let's talk about how we take something that's in line notation and expand it out. All right, so I'm just going to rewrite it, and then I'll put a blank slide in. It's MG, and then MG2 plus line makes the payoff for plus line. Okay, so what's on the left? is the anode reaction, and then the double line, that's representing like the salt bridge. Okay, that's what that's symbolic of. And then what's on the right is the cathode reaction. Okay, so let's, let's do this one together. I'll put in a blank slide so I've got some space here. All right, so this is the reaction that we just had. Okay, what's occurring here? is the anode reaction, and what's occurring here is the cathode reaction. Why do you think the anode's on the left? 
That's where it's produced. That's where the electrons are being produced, right. So the anode reaction's on the left. So that is my oxidation or my reduction? Which one is that? That's oxidation, right. And then this is my reduction. So if I gave you this cell notation and I said, okay, write the two half reactions, what are the two half reactions? Well, we've got Mg going to Mg2 plus. How many electrons are being generated here? How many electrons does that make? Two, right. And then the other half reaction will be Al3 plus going to Al solid. How many electrons is it gaining? Three. All right, so this is the oxidation, I mean the cathode or the anode? Well, it's right here, right? This is the anode reaction. This is the cathode reaction. And then if I asked you to calculate E cell, could you do that? Yeah, you would just look up the values. The reduction. Let's look them up together. For magnesium, Mg2 plus. is negative 2.37 and then for Al3 plus right above it negative 1.66 and if I asked you to calculate E cell could you do that? Yeah, you would just do your subtraction to be off to the races. Okay, so really the only new part here is how to interpret the line notation. Okay, the anode's always on the left, the cathode's always on the right. So it's anode and the double line, that represents your salt bridge, and then the cathode. Okay, it's just a shorthand. Instead of writing out a net ionic equation, I can just give you this, and that's a shorthand. Okay, so it's not anything that if you see it in the homework, or you see it on a quiz or a test, that you should panic about, right? It's just literally a shorthand. Does everyone see how to take cell, line cell notation and break it down into the half reactions? Identify the cathode and the anode, identify the oxidation and the reduction. And if I asked you to calculate E cell, could you do it? If I asked you to balance this, could you do it? What would I need to do in order to balance this? What would I need to do to balance this? Can I just add them up as is? No, what do I need to do to this one? Multiply by? three, multiply this one by two, but do I do that to these? No, I don't. Okay, good. So are you ready to try one of these for yourself? Here's a, a cell, I mean, here's a line notation. Break it into the half reactions, and then calculate E cell. I didn't ask you to balance the overall, just break it into the half reactions, calculate E cell. All right, let's go over the answer here. So there's the anode on the left and the cathode on the right. I got E cell of positive 0.26 volts. Did you? Do we agree? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now we're gonna deal with the thermodynamics in great detail on Wednesday, but let's just get the party started a little bit today. If E cell is positive, that's a spontaneous cell reaction. That's what we want, right? Because if we're making a battery, if we want our, our light bulb to go off, right, we want to have a spontaneous cell reaction. So we want E cell to be positive. That's the opposite of delta G, right? For spontaneous reactions, delta G is negative. But for E cell, we want it to be positive. If E cell comes out to be negative, it's a non-spontaneous cell reaction. So that means that we're gonna have to apply some outside force to get this cell reaction to occur, right? So 
um, something that you want for your battery, you know, in the lab, you're making a light bulb go off, you want a cell to be positive. Otherwise, you're going to have to get some outside influence to make it spontaneous. So positive E cell equals spontaneous, negative E cell is non-spontaneous. And so when that cell can produce current, in other words, when it has a positive E cell, we can do work, right? We can use that electrical current to do electrical work. And this is the last calculation we're going to do today. It's pretty easy. Work, represented with lowercase w, is equal to Q, negative Q, okay? Where Q is the number of moles of electrons that are transferred. So for instance, if we multiplied one reaction by two and one reaction by three to get six, six would go right here. Okay, that's the number of moles of electrons transferred. So unless I tell you the number of moles of electrons transferred is blah, 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 it would just be whatever the number of moles of electrons transferred is in your balancing process. We're going to multiply that by Faraday's constant, which is 96,485 coulombs per mole electron. And then E cell is just the calculated E cell that I just taught you how to do. And then your units are going to be either joules or kilojoules, whichever makes the most sense. So we're just going to dip our pinky toe into the thermodynamic calculations today. We'll dive in head first on Wednesday. So let's just do a real easy calculation today just to introduce the idea. So calculate the work produced by an electrochemical cell in which a current of 2.1 volts is produced by the transfer of 1.33 moles of electrons. So I've calculated E cell for you, and I've given you number of moles of electrons transferred. Right? How do I know E cell? Because I told you 2.10 volts is produced, and I also told you number of moles of electrons, 1.33. So it's just negative, that's built in, okay? Moles transferred times Faraday's constant, so moles, electrons, moles, electrons cancel. And then uh, we get when our units, coulombs cancel, we get our unit of joules. If you wanted to convert that to kilojoules, it would just be negative 269 kilojoules. I assume negative, you didn't move to decimal three over. Divide by a thousand. So here, I didn't make you calculate number of moles transferred. Didn't make you calculate E cell. I gave you all that information for you. So why don't you try this one? I'm not even going to pause the video because I'm giving you all the information you need. Calculate electrical work of a cell in which 2.5 moles of electrons are transferred to produce a, point, a current of 0.92 volts. So all you have to do here is figure out what's plug in where. What is this 2.5? That's name number of electrons, right? And then what's this? That's E cell, right? Again, if I hadn't given this to you, you would get this number of moles of electrons from balancing the half reactions. Okay, so if you had to multiply by one, one of them by three, one of them by two to get coefficients of six, that would be six. Okay, whatever number you cancel out goes right there. And then E cell, we just learned how to calculate E cell today. So all you have to do here is just plug in and you're off to the races. So easy, 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 easy example. If I gave you something more involved, just know how to get number of moles of electrons. That's whatever number you cross out in order to get the two half reactions to add up. So whatever number it ends up being, that goes in as moles of electrons times Faraday's constant. Don't forget to multiply by Faraday's constant. And then E cell is what we just learned how to do today. Questions? Feeling pretty good? Okay, well then that's where we're gonna stop for today. I have off hours between now and then, but otherwise I'll see you on Wednesday.